Hey everybody, Matt Kleskowski here from On One, and I want to show you a quick little uh, a quick little trick when it comes to some massive shadow recovery inside a Lightroom. Uh, it's kind of an undocumented little trick. It, it's really just reverting Lightroom back to a way that it used to work. All right, it all deals with the shadow slider and, and basically how powerful and, and almost in a way how potent it is. Um, the shadow slider, if I crank it up to 100, opens up the shadows. Okay, fair enough. Um, now, if I crank exposure up, you can see it really opens everything up, but we don't want to open up the highlights or recover any of the highlights or do anything there. We want to open up the shadows only. And I'm restricted. Once I get this to 100, I'm pretty much restricted here. Well, the way Lightroom used to work is, is they, they, Adobe made a change in Lightroom 4. The shadow slider before Lightroom 4 used to be called fill light. And fill light, when after Lightroom 4 came out, fill, a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, fill light was, was really more powerful um, before. And I don't know that it was more powerful, but it did have more of an impact. Well, you can get there, um, even if you're using Lightroom 5. What you do is you go to your settings menu, you go down to process, and just change this to 2010. Okay. Uh, same, uh, another way to get there does the same exact thing, just a different way, um, is just go down here to your camera calibration panel and under process, you can change it to 2010 there. So just a different way of doing the same thing. But when you do that and you go up here to your basic panel, again, these sliders are now named a little bit differently. This is using the older technology. This is using, you know, before Lightroom 4 technology here. And one of those sliders is fill light. Fill light was the same as, is the same as the shadow slider. Recovery was highlight detail recovery. Fill light is shadow detail recovery. And if you want to see the difference here, look at what fill light will do. Look at that. That's a big difference between fill light and the, the shadow slider that we have today. So if you have a photo that is just gone, there's a ton of detail lost in the shadows. Um, it's, you know, you're looking for a last ditched effort to try to recover something there. Then give this little trick a try and you might be able to, uh, to recover some of those details there. There's a lot of noise here. There's, there's bad things that come from recovering too much shadow detail. But again, if you have a photo that's at that point, um, it's definitely worth a try here. A couple of questions that come along with this, and I'm gonna give you a little uh, preset trick that I use for this as well. Uh, a couple of questions that I get is, well, if fill light is drastically different, is the same go true for recovery, for highlight detail recovery? Uh, the answer is no, okay? you barely see recovery in here. The new highlight slider from Lightroom 4 and newer um, is tremendously more powerful um, than the recovery slider ever was. So don't think recovery is no good here. Um, the other one that I get is, so what happens, can I go, can I switch back to the newer Lightroom sliders here after I do fill light? Well, the answer is no. So watch what happens. If I go back to the 2012 uh, which is the current one. See, it reverts back to my shadows slider and that's the furthest that I can go with it. So you'll have to stay over at least for this photo in the 2010 process version. I had somebody in one of my classes say, can I export it and then re-import it and use the new? You could, but that's probably going to the extremes. If you're really just trying to recover some shadow detail, um, if this doesn't do it, I, I'm not so sure you should be at that point anymore. So uh, this is probably about as far as most people are gonna go. All right, so uh, one last little trick here that I use for, for kind of previewing this because it's kind of a little pain to, to, to switch all the time. Uh, if you go over to your presets panel, we can create, create a preset. I'm gonna call it Crazy Shadows and I'm gonna check Fill Light and process version. You gotta do process version because that's the whole 2010 thing, okay? That gets us back to pre-Lightroom 4 days. I'm gonna hit create. Then I'm gonna hit reset and I'm just gonna crank my shadow slider up. And then I'm gonna go, I'll call it crazy shadows reverted. Well, not even reverted, but it's just with the, the newer sliders here. Again, I'm going to you know turn the process version back on and the shadow see it's not fill light anymore. It's shadows because I, I reset this photo back to the newer process. Hit create. And then what that'll do for me is it just gives me a quick way to kind of preview. I can just click on these presets and preview which one. So if I ever get to a photo where I'm not quite sure, um, you know, let's say I'm, I'm looking at this photo. And I just want to, I want a quick gauge of, of what kind of shadow detail I can recover. I can click on crazy shadows and see that that is way too much. 
or you can click on the other one and see that that's probably more in line. But um, that's kind of going a little bit, a little bit past. We'll even try it on this one here. Crazy shadows again. See, that's crazy. That's way too much. That's like, it's almost uh, nuclear. And uh, that one would be just fine. So it really is more for extreme cases where you really do have a, a very severely underexposed photo and you need to pull back detail from those shadows. Um, that'll give you a quick, easy way to do it. And if you make it into a preset that way, you don't have to go digging around in the menus and all that stuff. Uh, you can have a very quick way to do it. All right, folks, thanks for watching. My name is Matt Kleskowski, and I'll talk to you again really soon.